Happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to another episode of China Update, where I provide you with the most up-to-date political, economic, and geostrategic analysis on the world's number two economy. My name is Tony. Let's jump in. And we begin as we usually do with the economy. This week, Chinese financial media outlet Tai Sin published a concerning report about COVID-era personal business loans going bad, putting more strain on an already bruised banking system. During the pandemic, Beijing encouraged banks to expand lending to support small businesses, especially in sectors like retail, hospitality, and wholesale. This led to a surge in personal business loans (PBLs), which were designed to help entrepreneurs and small businesses cover operational costs like inventory and utilities. By June 2024, outstanding PBLs reached nearly 24 trillion yuan (3.4 trillion U.S. dollars), more than double the amount in 2019, with the so-called Big Six state-owned banks driving much of the growth. However, this rapid expansion has exposed significant risks, with rising non-performing loan (NPL) ratios becoming a growing concern. According to the Taisen report, several factors have contributed to this trend. Surprise, surprise! Many borrowers misappropriated PBL funds, using them to invest in real estate due to a lower interest rate compared to mortgages at the time. This practice was particularly common before the real estate market downturn in mid 2021, when property values began to decline. Borrowers who relied on rising property prices to repay loans or secure additional funding faced financial difficulties, leading to an increase in defaults. As a result, banks with significant exposure to PBLs in regions hit hardest by the real estate slump have reported notable increases in their non-performing loan ratios. To address these challenges, banks have tightened loan review processes and enhanced oversight of fund usage. However, enforcing compliance remains difficult. Additionally, recent central bank policies to lower existing mortgage rates aim to reduce incentives for home buyers to misuse these PBLs for early mortgage repayment. Nevertheless, the damage is already done, and this has put tremendous multi-trillion-dollar strain on China's already highly strained banking system. And despite these efforts, the growing non-performing loan ratios for PBL portfolios underscore vulnerabilities in the banking sector, particularly in the context of China's prolonged. Real estate slump. Next up for the economy. Apparently, in response to the series of mass attacks we have seen in recent weeks, Beijing is stepping up efforts to tackle delayed payments for migrant workers. Tuesday of this week, China's cabinet, the State Council, held a meeting to advance an action plan aimed at addressing arrears in the wages of ma- migrant workers after a three-month dedicated campaign kicked off on the first of November. A post-meeting statement read, "Quote." We need to resolutely tackle the political responsibility of managing wage arrears and consider the settlement of the issue an extremely important livelihood task. The objective is to firmly prevent any major mass incidents or vicious extreme events triggered by wage arrears. To safeguard the basic livelihood of the people and to maintain social harmony and stability. End quote. This is the clearest evidence to date that Beijing fears its inability to arrest China's economic slowdown is leading to social agitation and unrest, including violent mass attacks. China's migrant workers accounted for about 21 percent of the population last year, due to the project-based nature of construction industry management, which is what most of these migrant workers pour into. Wages are typically paid upon a project's completion. It remains customary in the construction sector to distribute the wages just before the annual Spring Festival holiday. The next one will be occurring in late January. However, due to mounting debt pressure on the property market and on local government balance sheets, wage arrear cases often emerge. In 2023, legal aid agencies across the country helped 540,000 workers recover 6.8 billion yuan, about a billion U.S. dollars, in unpaid wages, according to the Ministry of Justice. Next up, yesterday, Wednesday, in Hong Kong, Jimmy Lai, the media. Mogul took to the stand on his trial for two counts of participating in a conspiracy to collude with foreign forces and one count of conspiring to publish seditious material. Lai, who testified in English, said, quote, "After June fourth, nineteen eighty nine, I thought it was a good opportunity for someone like me, a businessman who had made some money, to participate in the delivery of information, the delivery of freedom. The more information you have, the more you are in the know." And the more you are free, end quote. 
From 1989 until he was jailed in 2020, Lai contributed more than 140 million US dollars to pro-democracy causes. When asked in court yesterday about the core values of his paper, Lai said, quote, The core values of Apple Daily are actually the core values of the people of Hong Kong. It was carved into our hearts because they lived under the institution of the British colony. End quote. When pressed to elaborate, Lai said those values were, quote, rule of law, freedom, pursuit of democracy, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of assembly. End quote. These comments come just one day after 45 were convicted under the so-called national security law. Lai's trial has been closely watched as a barometer of declining press and political freedoms in Hong Kong, which has embarked on a wide-sweeping crackdown on dissent in the wake of the 2019 protests. The trial has also coincided with a flagship investment summit that brought some of the biggest Wall Street names to Hong Kong. We discussed this in yesterday's video. Lai has already spent more than three years in detention. He was first arrested in 2020 after Beijing's national security law was passed. Lai is a British citizen, and on Monday, the country's Prime Minister, Keir Starmer, raised concerns about the, quote, deterioration of Lai's health, end quote, while speaking to China's top leader, Xi Jinping, on the sidelines of the Group of 20 summit in Brazil. Seconds after the exchange, the Chinese delegation ejected journalists from the room where the meeting was being held before Prime Minister Starmer had finished talking. Before this month's presidential election in the US, now President-elect Trump said he would, quote, 100 percent, end quote, get lie out of prison if returned to the White House. It would be, quote, so easy, end quote, Trump told a conservative podcast last month. Beijing evidently already knows how the trial will conclude. On Wednesday, yesterday, Foreign Ministry spokesperson Lin Jian said, quote, Jimmy Lai is a major mastermind and participant of the anti-China riots in Hong Kong. He is an agent and pawn of the anti-China forces, end quote. We have one more development to cover, but just quickly, if you're getting some value from today's episode of China Update, don't forget to hit the like button. If you have not done so already and you think you'd watch another episode of China Update, maybe consider subscribing. It's also a tremendous help if you share this with someone who you think would get some value from this sort of content. And for those who want to go the extra mile and help me keep China Update financially sustainable, I rely primarily on your support to keep going. Patreon and Buy Me A Coffee links are also in the description below. Thank you so much, everybody for the ongoing support. And finally for today, Tuesday saw the publication of the US-China Economic and Security Review Commission report to the US Congress. Topics this year include US-China emerging tech competition, unsafe and unregulated Chinese consumer goods, China in the Middle East, economic strategies for leveling the US-China playing field, China's new measures for control mobilization and resilience, China's counter-intervention capabilities, and a review of Taiwan, Hong Kong, economics, trade, security, politics, and financial affairs development in 2024. Most notably, this year, for the first time, the Commission unanimously recommended withdrawing permanent normal trade relations, PNTR status, from the People's Republic of China, a cornerstone of the US-China trade relationship since Beijing's entry to the World Trade Organization in 2001. It also recommended shuttering uh, duty-free loopholes on Chinese e-commerce goods and launching a, quote, Manhattan Project style, end quote, program to outpace Beijing in the development of advanced artificial intelligence. U.S. commentators argue that the new Congress would likely follow through on these recommendations if it came up to a vote. State media in China called the report a product of a, quote, anti-China advisory panel, end quote, with the state-run Global Times writing today, quote, Chinese observers argue that this move stems from a Cold War mentality with little regard for the serious impact the move could have on the American economy and even global supply chain, end quote. Meanwhile, the report also warned that China's electronic warfare ability now presents, quote, a significant challenge, end quote, to the U.S. in the event of a conflict across the Taiwan Strait, and that the People's Liberation Army had developed, quote, substantial economic warfare capabilities to detect, target, and disrupt, end quote, the U.S. military and its partners operating in the Indo-Pacific. Okay, that is today's episode of China Update. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Have a good Thursday, and I will see you all tomorrow.